A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We want you to know, brothers and sisters, of the grace of God that has been given to the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their profound poverty overflowed into wealth of generosity on their part. For according to their means, I can testify, and beyond their means, spontaneously, they begged us insistently for the favor of taking part in the service to the Holy Ones, and this not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and to us through the will of God, so that we urged Titus that, as he had already begun, he should also complete for you this gracious act also. Now, as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act also. I say this not by way of command, but to test the genuineness of your love by your concern for others. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that for your sake he became poor, although he was rich, so that by his poverty you might become rich. The word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God while I live. Blessed he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them. Who keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry, the Lord sets captives free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who were bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. Sant Evangelii Secundum Matthäum. Gloria Tibi Domine. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Did not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. Verbum Domini. Lord. 
Lord says, love your enemies, do good though to those who hate you, pray for those who persecute and blame you. St. Francis of Assisi uh, commented upon this. That person truly loves his enemy who is not upset at any injury which is done to himself. But out of love of God is disturbed at the sin of the other soul. Let the, him show his love for the other by his deeds. We often are very self-centered in our hatreds and our in, who we choose as enemies, but very seldom think of the love of God or love them for the sake of God. And that's, of course, the more perfect. So his short sermon on true love should make us wonder, maybe even have a little shame that we do not yet love as our Lord has commanded us. On a natural level in our being created, we are called to the self-gifting care for one another. But in experience, we realize that we are fallen, that some people it is easy to love. We might call them our neighbors. Some are even at, at first meeting difficult to love. And geographically, some of these latter ones may be our neighbors, live right in the house next to us. But what it comes down to, or in experience, we're often very content dividing humanity into uh, friends who we like and enemies that we hate. And unfortunately, Many seem to go from uh, right to left, from sheep to goats, then uh, to be moved into our charity. So Christian charity, though it's not blindness, it doesn't give permission to sin, as if you know, just loving those who are by sin enemies of God and enemies of, of true love, but hope, Christian charity hopes for the conversion of those whom we extend our compassion towards, that God showed his love for us while we were yet sinners, enemies of God. Christ dies for us. And if God so loves us, we ought to have love for one another. There was a Jewish man, a police officer, who had just moved into a, a new house with his family. And the first night, he mows the grass and blows some of the, the, as he's mowing along his neighbor's lawn, you know, some of the grass goes into his neighbor's lawn. So they go out to get groceries. And when he returns, there's a big pile of grass clippings on his driveway. So he never met his neighbor and uh, an immediate you know, hatred for his neighbor grew up. So he never talked to him. Um, so when this man was converting to the Catholic faith, the hardest question was not uh, the usual ones, but if he would be truly able to forgive his neighbor from his heart, as our Lord says in the parable, of the unforgiving servant of Matthew 18, how he would be able to love the one he considered his enemy. And it, as often happens, it's only providence that's able to untangle that knot, that on Good Friday before his baptism, after 12 years of never talking uh, with the neighbor, the Catholic, this other, his neighbor comes up to him. He's Catholic all, after all this time, as Catholics were terrible neighbors many times. And they, in a short conversation, just that all, all the resentments are gone. So having entered into the passion, meditated upon our Lord 
and his love on the cross, uh, we enter into forgiving love. So, um, so it's a beautiful uh, witness. So our Lord commands us to love one another as he has loved us. That's, and it's incredible that this even has to be a command because this is what we're made for. And, but we look how frail we are. So Jesus Christ reveals another way, the way of God who is love. This is not just a goal or a model, but a grace, a grace that makes it possible that you will love your enemies. And this we see in Christ as he dies on the cross, that he forgives, that he pours out his very self for the forgiveness of sins. So when we hold on to rancor, this is a cross too heavy to bear and not the cross of Jesus. And, and almost always, well, always, we can take out the almost, it is due to ignorance. You know, often we have no clue who this, we've never talked, all the, the different difficulties each of us has. And just to offer that person and offer our own lack of conversion, admit our lack of conversion, and offer that to our Lord. And often it is a work of hope that we pray for those who persecute and blame us. We do this even at the beginning of the Mass. I've sinned again, you know, I've sinned in thoughts, words, deeds, actions, and we pray for one another. We admit, I need your prayers. We don't say, you need my prayers, <laughs> you know. We admit humbly that we're in need of forgiveness. Um, so, and I think also of uh, 1 John chapter 5, if you see your brother sinning, pray for him that his sins be forgiven. And he says, I don't speak of mortal sin. So there's some sins that it's not that we don't pray for that, but we pray for the, the grace for that person to move that person, that they would return to the state of grace. But that our prayers, uh, when we see someone sinning, to pray for them that they would be forgiven and those sins would be forgiven. That's a powerful, and especially in the Holy Mass, that happens for us. Um, so our Lord invites us to enter into his heart, that we would be children of the Heavenly Father, that we find the peace to die to all the obstacles to grace in our lives, all that keeps us from living mercy. God is the judge of hearts. We often, almost could say always, <laughs> we often get it wrong. And our Lord offers his own cross to be ours, one that is demanding, yes, but light and humble. What good is it for us to hold on to our self-made burdens when we hold on to rancor and what we think will be easier to keep unforgiveness of our in our hearts not to extend mercy not to forgive is in fact the more difficult as it prevents us from going to christ taking on his sweet yoke prevents so many graces to come to us the commandments of god are not burdensome. Even if they require the greatest courage to live out in, in an increasingly hostile world. So God's mercy is so great for us as consolations overflow as we receive his mercies, the ability to forgive. They overflow as we are able to console others with the same love and mercy we have received in God. So he has loved that we may no longer be enemies, but friends. 